Hi everybody! So today I'm briefly discussing and doing some demonstrating on how to learn from other jazz musicians. Now what I mean by other jazz musicians is musicians off your main instrument. In my case it's trombone so I'm going to be referring to saxophonists, trumpeters, bass players, drummers, etc. You know some of the traditional jazz instruments. Okay so here are three jazz musicians and one thing I've taken from each one. Now keep in mind that it's not necessarily notes, but a lot of the time it's actually how they play these notes. Okay, so the first musician is Louis Armstrong. I think what I took from Pops is that everything he plays feels good and makes you feel good, no matter if he's singing it or playing it on cornet or trumpet, it just makes you feel really good. I mean, yeah, it's amazing uh, technicality that he has there. He's playing everything accurately in tune and time, etc. But it's just, I think, what he gives, what he has in his sound that I think is a personification, ROE, of who he is. So let's take a part of his solo on Wesson Blues and I'll give my interpretation of what I think I've learned from Pops. <laughs> Number two is Charlie Parker. I think what I've taken from him, apart from a lot of the notes I've taken from his solos and his melodies, is his swing feel, man. If you check out like the recording of him playing Cherokee in 1943, I believe, with the with the guitar, it's just him and guitar. Oh man, it feels so good and like it's just right in the pocket. Of course, it, he makes it sound really easy and but the main thing I get is that. I think if he were to play by himself, you could almost hear like drums in his sound. So I think one part of it is the vectors that he has in his playing, whether it's really fast double time lines or just eighth notes. And what I mean by this is, uh, I guess you can take like straight eighth notes with a very slight lilt on them. Just tapping here on my leg. And just kind of add accents here or there to kind of imply larger grooves or beats or claves or something, I guess. I don't know. Mm, mm. So on the trombone, it might sound something like this. So a double timeline might sound something like this. I'll do my best to demonstrate it. Last but not least, number three is John Coltrane. I think what I got from Train was his sound. Man, it's a sound that's so deep that I think you can only get there from practicing as much as he did. And in addition to having the abilities and personality that he has, a curiosity as well. So what I used to do sometimes in practicing is close my eyes and envision that like I was John Coltrane on stage and just try to really get inside his sound and try to understand what he was saying. And uh, I guess uh, to demonstrate that, I'll play Stardust. It's one of the, my most memorable recordings of his that I have in my head. It helped me memorize the key of D flat. So this is me trying to understand John Coltrane, I guess.
Okay, so that's it for this week. Please like and share this video if you found it useful, and consider subscribing to my channel so if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any comments, requests, or questions, please leave them down below. And until then, we'll see you all next week. Peace.